Well, welcome back everyone. This is going to be a nasty, nasty video. If you do not want to hear the bearish sentiment I have, this is probably not the one for you. Take this as a major warning for those out there. This doesn't even come from me. It comes from Stanford University. If you didn't read this article, it blew my mind. I was like, holy cow. It puts it in perspective of how dangerous it is right now, right now. And what am I talking about? I want to get right into this because this is something else. I got to tell you, half of America's banks are potentially insolvent. This is how a credit crunch begins. Folks, this is no joke. What am I talking about? You might say, Mo, you're, you're spreading fear, uncertainty, doubt. I'm not. I'm reporting the facts. And of course, I just go through the twin crashes in U.S. commercial real estate in the U.S. bond market have collided with 9 trillion uninsured deposits in American banking system. $9 trillion that are not covered by FDIC. Now, first things first, how much money does FDIC have? Well, that's the thing a lot of people don't realize. They're down to what? Here it is, in case you don't realize it. They only got 127 billion left, folks. They are what? Ultimately, may require its own bailout. So if we have 127 billion is hardly anything when you have 9 trillion uninsured at risk. Now we move forward. The second and third biggest bank, they collapse. We know this uh, as SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, First Republic. You know that was, that was something. How many more banks are out there just like that? And there are people out there shorting them, buying put options, and I don't blame them. If they're gonna have mismanagement, there are wise investors going to make some money off of it. And you can see some of these out there that are absolutely starting to get hit hard. Almost half, and check this out, half of 4,800 banks are already running, burning through their capital buffers. They may not have to mark all losses to market under U.S. accounting rules, but that does not make them solvent. And this is where they get into actual, if you actually sell their assets compared to their liabilities, Remember, if they don't have enough money to pay their liabilities, they're in some, they're in some trouble, my friends. Then you can see this. It's spooky. Thousands of banks are underwater, said Professor. I believe it's Suru. I'm not sure. Excuse me if I'm wrong. A banking expert at Stanford University, one of our top universities in this country. Let's not pretend that this is just about Silicon Valley Bank and First Republic. A lot of U.S. banking of the U.S. banking system is potentially insolvent. Folks, this is scary. How much does it actually need to be to absolutely crush FDIC? I just showed you 100 and something billion out of 9 trillion. It's not much. What is it? 10% uh, would be 900 billion. So 2% is 180 billion. It would only take two out of 100 and we would be in deep, deep trouble. And to me, friends, this is this is something we shouldn't just walk away from. Remember Charlie Munger? I came out and I talked about Charlie Munger the other day. And he said something about the, the the real estate. And he was talking about some of that absolutely being in dire straits. And they didn't see a lot of fun for the banking. It, that commercial real estate hasn't been fully uh, understood by everyone out there investing. In other words, it's looking ugly. And so they're not getting out there running and buying all these banks this time because the commercial real estate is nasty. And so if we take that with the bonds, how they took the short term and now they're getting hit with that, combined with the commercial real estate in a lot of these big areas, this could get nasty, folks. This could get nasty. So that's something scary. I wanted to bring that up. And of course, we don't know how this is going to go moving forward, but I will say it again. We are just getting started. We have a serious recession, the debt ceiling problems, put it all together. This could get nasty quickly. And so I know everybody wants the markets to go higher, and in the long run, we will. There can be turbulence, and I think we're seeing that. And so we're, I'm out there doing what I need to do. And for those over at the, the Patreon, I was over there yesterday and the day before loading the boat with different plays that I think are going to make money through this. And you can see uh, what I'm doing and everything else. I, I highly recommend coming over. The link's down in the description. You can come on over and join up, pick your tier. We have a lot of great opportunities over there. we got the private Discord. I highly suggest coming over for that. It is popping. It's a lot of fun. And you have a lot of like minds actually trying to make a lot of money. So 
this is a good community to be a part of. I recommend getting over there. I don't know what you're waiting for. Take it to the next level. All right, now we move on. Now I, I show you this. That was a Stanford University. All right, this is not Stanford University here. This is something different. Now I told you, Stanford University professor, one of the top. We know this. They come out. They warn us. They have all these. Everybody out there is doing their research, and it's not coming up roses and unicorns, fart and skittles. This is poop sandwich sprinkled with sugar. They're trying to make this thing look good so the market continues higher. I'm not eating it. I'm not eating it. I'll pass it over to you know somebody who I don't really care for. I'm not eating it, all right? So J Jerome Powell, he'll bring his muskrat souffle, and I'll, I'll take a bite of that. I, I wouldn't mind that. But uh, as we move into this, take a look at this. If it's as, if the whole country takes a pay cut, that is the top economist warns of a recession, another 23% drop in stocks. I agree with this one. This was the person, I swear, hey, if you're watching the channel, congratulations, because this is the former, this is David Rosenberg, this is the former North American economist chief at Merrill Lynch. He, you don't get up that high unless you are the, the person who knows what you're talking about. Obviously, David Rosenberg, president of his own research. Now, he, what's he saying? Let's just burn through it because I think you need to understand. He came out and he said, if it's not this quarter, I think it's next quarter. The leading indicators are telling me a recession is actually starting this quarter. I agree. I said this, and remember, I said this in the middle of last year, we'd have a recession. My base case was Q2 into Q, and then Q3 was an outside shot. I stuck by Q2. It, even though everybody else was changing, we stuck by it. I still believe at, in the long run, once uh, the uh, officials who call recessions come out, they're going to say Q2 is the official start. And it might be in 2024 until you find out. But I'm letting you know now. I'm putting it on video. I've been putting it on video for months. We'll see. So he he's kind of with that. And he puts down a recession is a very big call because it's actually a haircut to national income. I like this. He said it's like a Lamborghini. It's not like a Lamborghini going from 80 miles per hour to 20. It's a Lamborghini going in reverse. And, that, and he's, it's an a analogy to the U.S. economy. Meanwhile, a recession could spell trouble for the stock market, of course. And at the end of the day, I wanted to bring this to what he believes. It's not easy for people out there to short the market or get out. But this, he makes a great point, and I've talked about this before. You got the forward PE around 19 for the S&P 500. That gets us a roughly, what, 5.3% on our money. Where can And that's equities. That's the stock market. That's the highest risk, all right, when we're looking at it. Where could we go? Well, you can go to single A or triple B bonds for the corporate bonds. And then check it out. You get 5.4%. I'll do you one better, Rosenberg. You can go out and get six month treasuries paying over 5% risk free. There you go. You know, you have a corporate bond. So you can go right into the treasuries. And to me, when that rate, or you can go higher, obviously, with the corporate, and you can go that route, it's much, much more safe than equities. They get first right if anything happens to the company. Bondholders do over equities. Long story short, I get it. But at the end of the day, there is a lot of money to be had, and you can do it almost risk-free with the treasuries or with the bonds from the corporations, which has a little bit more risk than the treasuries. That's why we keep getting stopped at 4,200. That's why I put my ceiling at 4,250. It, it wasn't an arbitrary number. At that number, we're around 19 forward PE. You can just go out and get into treasuries. Why would anybody put money in the stock market when you go into treasuries and make same, if not a little more, depending where we're at, risk-free. Why would you do that? And the big money doesn't. And that is why that, that level's there. That's why every time we get up, I, I continue to buy inverse. I continue to sell my longs and move in because I do expect it to come back down. It has to make sense. And that's what I keep doing. So he's in there with that. But more importantly, he comes out with a number. And this is, I'm always impressed by guys who are willing to put it out there. Because you're going to have videos made about you if you're right. You're going to have videos made about you if you're wrong. They'll come back two, three years and cherry pick a, a, a prediction you made and say, look at this, he was wrong. You see it all the time. And, and that to me, it's always by those who are afraid to get in the arena and actually make predictions themselves. It's easier to throw the stones than to actually get out there and try to make the predictions. And you, you see it all the time. So here it is. The target is based on his assumption the U.S. economy will enter a recession. So he's saying we have a recession. I, I think we do. I think it's I think we're already in it. 
And at the time, he assumes the multiples will bottom at 15 to 16. So he says, basically implies a downside of 23%. And he put it out there that with that being said, they right here it is, 3,200. Rosenberg has a price target of 3,200 for the S&P 500. Remember what I said, uh, it was about six months ago and I've been saying it up here. What is the range for the bottom if we hit a recession, I said? 2,900 to 3,300. That's for a, a regular recession, just a regular recession. It could get worse. It goes down to 2,900 if we have a serious recession. If we have a recession at all, I think 3,300 is hit. And that's my opinion on it. But it's nice to see that some of the other people out there who do this research, they love doing the numbers and all that other stuff, they can do that. Now, for those who don't know my background, I taught high school and college level classes, finance, business, all that good stuff. But I also was a statistics uh, teacher as well. So I love reading statistics and all that other stuff, put it together with all that research. And also I worked as a financial advisor as well. That is good stuff. Put it all together and you can start to see this stuff using historical data. And that's what makes me nervous. So this is a warning, I think, from all these big talking heads. More importantly, for those who don't trust me or Rose... Uh, Rosenberg, or the person from Stanford, you got Elon Musk, Larry Summers. Larry Summers, past Treasury Secretary, for those who don't know. The odds of that happening sometime in the next 12 months, I think, are pretty good. Perhaps 70%. They're just pulling statistics out. You know, 93% of all statistics are made up on the spot. That, that is a study you want to look at. All right, if the Federal Reserve does what's necessary to contain inflation, I think a slowdown is likely to come. In other words, he's saying they're going to have to crush the economy. And he's putting it pretty high. Now, Elon says, hold on here. Mild recession's here now. It's going to get worse. Further hikes, even one is a further hike, will trigger a severe recession. Mark my words. He's probably from the future and already knows. <laughs> that's Elon Musk for you. And that's what I'm worried about. And so you got Elon out there. It has all that data. He understands. He sees it. He even said it there. And it's ugly. So what do you think down below? Do you believe we are heading towards the end of times for the short term? We will hit a bottom eventually. And, or do you think I'm crazy? The numbers, I don't care what you say number wise, Mo. We're going to the moon. We're going to 5,000. Even though, think about that. I want you to think about it. That would put the forward earnings way below what you can get risk-free from the treasuries and you know, a lot less risk from corporate bonds. So anybody says 5,000, I would love to know how and how, how could that be supported by a market that's paying less than the bonds and the treasuries? in terms of forward earnings. How does that work? So anytime I see that, I shake my head and I have to question their expertise. I just don't get it. But let me know down below what you think. And more importantly, folks, if you did not take advantage of this, I'll show it again. 15 free stocks down below right now. All you gotta do is click the Moo Moo link, put in $100, you get 10 free stocks. That is from my channel, all right? That's from my channel and you go ahead, $100, 10 free stocks worth up to 2,000 a piece, put in 1,000, you get 20 stocks worth up to 2,000 a piece. And of course, do not sleep on Weeble. A dollar or more deposit, you get up to 12 stocks worth up to 30,600. Do both of them. Anybody 18 in the house or older, take advantage of both. But more importantly, join me over at the Patreon. That, my friends, is the way you can support the channel. I'll share my buys and sells. You can become part of the private Discord. We got some good things going on. Take it to the next level and join me. That's what I got for you today. I appreciate you stopping by. Let's get out there and make some money.